Hey, what's your singing and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we will share with you guys something that I've done over the last week. A hard reset and definitely more small. So without further ado, I'm just going straight to the video. The reason for us uh, doing a hard reset is because we wanted to change out the mosses. We also wanted to change out the sponge filter as well. So we literally want to change over to the Aquarian Co-op uh, sponge filter. And the reason for that is because it has the air lift. It actually helps a lot in, in that sense, in terms of circulation. And also we wanted to change out all the soil and you know get a tank all clean up before we add new soil and new streams. So over here we use a method to actually um, to siphon out the soil as you can see. Uh, we use the uh, hoses and then of course a pail and uh, for demonstration purpose and of course a, a sieve. The sieve has been covered with a little kitchen uh, you know, a lining uh, where you can actually, you know, after siphoning out the soil, you can actually back them up and then throw it inside a plastic bag. So there's a really uh, fast free in that sense and uh, when we do a hard reset, we actually remove all the water, clean the whole tank and uh, make sure that it's 100% uh, clean before we actually put the soil in and the water in. So in this case, you can actually see that we are you know, cleaning up the tanks and doing all this uh, preparation work uh, just to ensure that you know uh, the next time that when we finish our hard reset uh, the tank is fully ready for the cycle and over here you can actually see that you know uh, we are doing such a such a you know an activity to actually show you guys that a hard reset is also part of the process so with you know all the siphoning of the soil we started uh, filling up the, the tank and then changing the, the, the filter and one of the things that we actually wanted to um, share with you guys is actually in this video on the moss mop. So moss mop, as you can see, you know, is something like uh, using the uh, previous or you know the, the fish keeping method of uh, using a, a yarn mop, where we, it floats around or it sticks to one area where the fishes actually go and hide and spawn. So over on the right side, you can actually see, you know, on the right side, we can actually see that this is uh, one of the uh, concepts that we use from a fish breeding method, uh, that which is a yarn mop. And this has been, you know, used for many, many, many decades uh, in fish breeding. And utilizing this method to actually, you know, one of the reasons why we are using this method is because in the past, we often had this, uh, <coughs> you know, the mosses that is always on the ground. And they started to creep and, I don't know, cling onto the... Uh, the substrate and the reason for that is <clears throat> we when during recess we actually find it quite difficult in the sense that it rips out the so in the past you know we often use like like this like over here you can see that the the mosses are on the substrate and it actually you know different moss actually uh, clings onto the uh, substrate uh, there are a few that don't cling, like for example the Taiwan moss and the flame moss, they don't cling onto it. However, there are some mosses like Christmas moss and uh, yeah, and Java moss, they actually do cling. So uh, when you do a reset, you actually kind of like rip out uh, a lot of things. And that's the reason why, you know, when we started with this and we realized that uh, actually this is a fairly good method uh, compared to the ones that <coughs> uh, when we just leave it on the, on the uh, substrate. So with that, we actually can see, you know, over here, you can see that the, you know, uh, the, the streams are actually on top of the uh, mosses and they also give a lot of coverage and uh, biofilm as well. So that is uh, fairly critical in, in that sense. So <clears throat> I think this is one of the, the changes that we have made to make it slightly better in the sense. And I actually wanted, you know, just to sidetrack a little bit to show you guys uh, one of the things that you know, what happens when there isn't sufficient biofilm or there isn't sufficient food in the tank um, <clears throat> that will uh, impact the entire tank ecosystem. So I'm just going to turn on the light over here. Uh, <coughs> you can actually see this two tank is filled with stream babies. You know, there's a lot of stream. These tanks are doing really well. What I have done over here is that I have removed a lot of the females, uh, the, the adult females as well. Uh, because this tank is really fully overloaded <clears throat> and it's looking at us in terms of uh, you know plants it's in a sad state and in, it, it doesn't actually have the mosses as well so it's really a bare tank 
there's a lot of babies in there and also on the left side of this tank you can actually see also you know it's, it looks in a very sad state but however there's a lot of babies there's a lot of uh, streamlets there's there's over here uh, and that's the reason why we wanted to um, show you guys that what happens when there is so many babies and when the biofilms are being stripped off you can actually see the plant is being really stripped off uh, everything all the biofilm and things like that the babies kind of like stop growing or their growth is really stagnant um, so what we normally have to do in this sense is that the introduction of uh, supplementary biofilm so i'm just going to stop here and then i'm just going to put it right in here so i'm just going to drop the ball in there uh, this is just a sidetrack on the uh, the video i just wanted to share with you guys because such uh, occurrence you know uh, or such display wouldn't happen always and that's the reason why i just wanted to quickly take this opportunity to actually share with you guys what's going to happen and if you can take a look over here <coughs> It wouldn't take a lot of time in terms of whether uh, when, when the streams actually come and congregate and uh, uh, look at the, I mean, to, to check out the, the Lupao and the Calyx ball. So this is a bigger version. So this is the Lupao because there's a lot of streams in there. I actually wanted you to use a stronger blend um, to make sure that they actually get the uh, sufficient biofilm as well. As you can actually see over here, it doesn't take a lot of time for the uh, streams to actually congregate around the uh, Lupao. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, biofilms that's going to be created and then uh, it will actually help to, you know, balance the tank in terms of the nutrition and the uh, food supply in, in that sense. Uh, so it actually gives the plant a, a chance to, to grow, but however this plant, I think, is gone. Uh, it left all the, the life roots, however the core could still sprout out some new leaves. However, I don't think that's going to really really uh, make a big difference in, in, in this case and the reason for that now you see uh, we do have a supplement biofilm over here we do not have the moss mop so mosses while some people find that it's very uh, untidy uh, however I think it is a very good addition to the tank uh, to help establish and balance out the entire ecosystem in, in, in an aquarium over here you can actually see the same thing as well uh, the plant is in a very sad state. However, as you can see over here, uh, there's, a, you know, there's a new leaf that's going to sprout out. Uh, however, you can look at the streams. Um, they are all now uh, over at the, uh, the ball and they are consuming it as well. So this is not a very good reflection of you know, uh, you know, the, the potential of what the tank can, can, can be. And the reason is because you know, this tank has been left alone for quite some time in the sense that there is no inter, uh, intervention to add additional biofilm and also did not add um, any of the mosses. So the tank could actually be in such a state uh, where they, the streams literally strip off everything and, for, and now you can actually see that uh, with, with this uh, additional biofilm it actually helps and all the streams are really coming over to it. All right, so coming back to the moss mop, I uh, just wanted to share with you guys that uh, this black ninja tank has a moss mop as well. How do we actually secure them? Uh, there's actually quite a few methods. One of the methods is just uh, you just wink it around uh, the tubes uh, like this. It's uh, fairly simple and then you just let it grow out in that sense. So over here, this moss mop can actually act uh, as a, you know, a place for hiding. Uh, definitely of course for biofilm as well as you can see over here uh, the uh, black ninja is actually consuming the, the calyx ball for this uh, in this case uh, we are using a calyx ball uh, the reason is because the, the numbers of in this tank is not really high and uh, we are using the calyx ball as well so it gives additional supplement so I'm just going to quickly swing, swing around uh, to actually show you guys uh, so this is another tank uh, you can actually see this tank, we actually kept the uh, mosses on the ground uh, to show the differences uh, between the, uh, in terms of the uh, aesthetic, aesthetics of the uh, tank uh, versus the, the moss mop. They are really going all over the ball, uh, they are going crazy over the ball as you can see. And then definitely as I move it around, uh, this is the uh, deep blue boats, the blue boats are fine. And over here, another tank of uh, of streams. You can just see. Yeah, over here you can actually see that the streams are really going all over the ball. However, uh, you know this is not to talk about the ball. 
uh, this is really to talk about the uh, the moss mob over here uh, this tank has a moss mob as well let me zoom out uh, this has a moss mob as well uh, you just uh, put it around the uh, air filter uh, tubings and I think that will definitely work in that sense uh, there's another one over here let's see uh, there's not much movements over here however I think you know you get the gist of things uh, it's around and to show you guys uh, some of the things that uh, we are actually doing so all these tanks are actually going to be cycled and done and then we'll start putting in streams as well yeah so I hope you guys enjoy the uh, video and learn something from it and definitely you know the moss mob method uh, definitely be one of the things that we're going to change across all the aquarium tanks over here that we have and the reason is because it actually looks aesthetically nicer much nicer than uh, on the ground because one of the good things is that the uh, we can actually see the streams uh, everywhere uh, and one of the things is that because the, sometimes the streams die uh, below the, the, the mosses and we are not able to see or behind it. So with this method, we can actually uh, really know that uh, what's happening, what's going on in the tank. Uh, we have uh, increased moni monitoring uh, you know, uh, in, in that sense and uh, you know, uh, definitely it helps uh, give uh, you know, breeders uh, a, a sense of uh, control uh, in, in that sense. So thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to subscribe to this channel and give a thumbs up. And for those you know, uh, who wants to be part of this journey and wants to join the member of uh, Stream Century, please, uh, please do so. It will really help in terms of uh, churning out new contents as well. So thank you guys for watching this video and until next time, peace out.